Good to be here. I'd like you to get your Bibles and turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Now you live in a time when people don't believe the Bible. Amen. They don't believe it. So Amen. you can talk to them all till you're blue in the face about what the Bible says and they just laugh at you. Yes, sir. And of course they didn't arrive at that position overnight. Would you like to stand with me tonight as we read from the 13th chapter? Did you know that they build hotels? And don't have a 13th floor? Now, people are superstitious. They certainly are. In Revelation chapter number 13, we read about the beast, the Antichrist. In verse number 14, it says, And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And if you'd like to, to uh, get my tape, I preached this talk this morning in Sunday school about that image. The image shows up more in the book of Daniel than any New Testament book. And the image, I mean the revelation, than any New Testament book. And it shows up more in the book of Daniel than any Old Testament book. Sixteen times in Daniel and eleven times in Revelation, the image is mentioned. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. We don't know what that mark is. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. We've got his number. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for his number, for it is the number of a man, and it is a number intensified. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Man was created on the sixth day. Six is indelibly stamped upon mankind. Seven in, number is the, seven in the Bible is the number of completion. God finished His work on the seventh day, rested. Eight in the Bible is the number of new beginnings. The number eight is associated with the Lord Jesus Christ. The gematria of His name is 888. The gematria of the name of the, of the Antichrist is 666. Whatever His name is, it will come out to 666. We don't know what it is. But he's going to show up. Father, in Jesus' name, give me wisdom now. In thy holy name we pray, open our hearts to receive your word. Not the word of man, but as it is, the word of God. In thy name we pray, amen. You're going to find yourself daily becoming a minority because you believe the Bible. Most people, even who go to church today, believe more in pop psychology than they do the Bible. They surround themselves with quote-unquote trained counselors and educated counselors instead of preachers and ministers, the Word of God. Amen. Men are no longer looking to the Bible as the source of light and understanding. They're looking to each other. The Revelation chapter number 13 says that this beast is going to control commerce. Now, you've lived through, and it's not complete yet, but you're living in Amen. the most profound commercial uh, time the United States has gone through since 1929. Amen. You're living in what's called a severe recession. Some folks have even referred to it as a depression. Two of the largest car manufacturers in the world have filed for bankruptcy just in the last few days, General Motors and Chrysler. The President of the United States of America, if you don't know this, has created a group of czars, and he surrounds himself with these czars, and they are placed over various parts of the government and his policy making. He has a car czar who's responsible for dismantling General Motors and then recreating it. 
He also has a banking czar that has to deal with the banking industry and what's going on there. He has a czar that is dealing with the health industry. He's a czar that's dealing with all these different aspects of the industry, of the, of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, 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 Mr. Obama's uh, administration. Just a few days ago, the President of the United States of America stood in Cairo, Egypt, one of the oldest towns in the world, and addressed the Egyptian parliament, I guess, or school or whatever over there, along with the Arab world. His speech was carried all over the world and watched by millions of people. Mr. Obama made some statements to the Arabs when he stood in Egypt. And one of the things that he said, which has gotten a lot of attention, is the fact that he made reference to Iran and to its nuclear ambitions. He made, statement of the, made reference to the fact that Iran has a right to nuclear power as much as any other nation. Bill Crystal and Charles Krauthammer are two uh, columnists in the country. They were interviewed by Chris Wallace, I think his name is, the younger brother of Mike Wallace. And he asked him about the speech that Mr. Obama gave. And Bill Crystal said this. He said that if the President of the United States had intended to start a war, in the Middle East, he's doing a good job. Charles Krauthammer agreed with him. The bottom line is that he has the nation of Israel scared to death because they believe that Iran is about to create a nuclear weapon. And they are not going to sit idly by and let Iran create a nuclear weapon. I don't know if you taught this in your history books or not, but back in the 50s, Nikita Khrushchev put some missiles in Cuba, 90 miles off of the coast of Key West, Florida. The president at that time was John Fitzgerald Kennedy. He confronted Mr. Khrushchev and told him if those missiles were not out of there in a certain amount of time, that they would be forcibly removed and we would go to war if we had to. So it was the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it almost brought the world into nuclear war. The reason that it almost brought the world into nuclear war is because 90 miles away from the continental United States, with atomic armed missiles aimed down your throat, the President of the United States at that time, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, knew that he could not defend and protect this country there would not be enough time when a missile only has to go 90 miles. They could have hit Miami, Florida very easily. So he gave him an ultimatum. And Khrushchev backed down. Thank God. And a nuclear confrontation was avoided. There is no difference between what's happening in Iran right now and Israel as to what happened then. Iran has already tested ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles. They have missiles that are capable of carrying, or that's North Korea. North Korea has tested ICBMs, missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads from one continent to another, in con intercontinental ballistic missiles, which is another hot place. But this, these people in Iran have tested over and over again missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads. There is no doubt in my mind or the mind of anybody in Israel that if Iran gets nuclear weapons, they'll either use them themselves or they'll give them to terrorists like Hezbollah. Because they armed and created Hezbollah. So the bottom line tonight is that the United States of America is in a peculiar situation. If the President of the United States has given the green light to Iran to have nuclear weapons, why did he do it? Did he do it because he knows that it will bring about a war? That Israel will strike Iran? They have the Prime Minister in office who will do the job. Benjamin Netanyahu will do the job. Amen. Could it be 
that the President of the United States wants him to do that. He wants Israel to attack Iran so that he can step in and make peace. And a peacemaker in Daniel chapter number 11, just go read it. And look at how close you are to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just think about it. If the war breaks out, somebody's got to make peace. And the Bible says Israel will sign a covenant with death and hell. And God says, I will annul the covenant that you've made with death and hell. And it's an amazing thing how you think, how in the world is this going to come about? And here all of a sudden in just the last few weeks, it starts falling in place. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter number 3 that in the last days, perilous times shall come. I want to talk about tonight some of the perils of the perilous times. We're living in that time. This coming Friday, digital television will become universal all over the United States of America, not just America, but other parts of the world. A lot of folks are completely in the dark as to what it means. Digital television cannot be received with the antenna that you have outside on your house. That antenna is designed for analog television, just like an analog radio and an analog signal. It's an entirely different thing completely. A digital signal has to do with computer technology. A digital signal has to do with, with a much higher tech. A digital signal must therefore be received with a digital receiver. If you own a newer television set, I don't know what the date is, but if you own some of the newer television set, it has the digital receiver built in. And you've bought a television set that will receive analog on one hand and digital on the other. But after, the, after Friday, they'll only broadcast in digital. And everybody's told in the country that this is so you'll get a much better signal. You'll get a better picture. And I'm sure that's exactly what it's all about, to get a better picture. Surely it is, don't you think so? Or could it be that the strange thing about a technology like computer technology that deals with digital, that it can send a signal that way and receive a signal this way? That it's bidirectional. That the signal is not only coming into your television set, but if the equipment is in the TV, it can also send a signal back Amen. to where it came from. That's true. Amen. That's not hype. That's a fact. I'm not saying your television can do that. I'm not even saying the box. Some of you may have bought a box to go with your analog TV so you could receive a digital signal. I'm not saying it can do that right now. But there's an awful lot of watchdog groups out there who seem to think that that's exactly where they're headed. That the idea is that they're going to have a television set set up in your house where they can monitor what you're doing. Amen. Now somebody says that's awful wild. That's a wild idea. Yeah. The other day I heard someone on television talking about this. How many of you have one of these things right here? About most of you do. All right. That is a digital receiver. And a digital transmitter. Amen. Okay. In, in, a, in essence, essentially a, a small computer, especially if you have one of these Blackberries or something like that, you've got a computer in your hands. And if you have the capability in the one that you hold in your hands to log on to the Internet and get your email and surf the web, how many have that? Then you have in your hands something that can be communicated to without you knowing it. Anytime you are logged on to the internet, you think you're on there looking at what you have on your screen and you're surfing the web and you're doing this and you're doing that. Have you ever had a little screen pop up, a little window pop up, trying to sell you something? How many ever had that happen? You didn't ask for it. You didn't want it. But it just pops up on your screen all of a sudden. Well, then somebody has control over what's going on. Somebody has the ability to communicate with you whether you like it or not. They have the ability to override what you're looking at on your computer screen. Amen. Now let me give you something to think about. If they can put a screen up on your computer screen, a little window, advertising, whatever. 
If they can put that on there, and how many of you have ever logged on to your, fired your computer up, and, and, uh, and, when you, and when you fired up Windows, most people use Windows, Vista now, some still using the, old, uh, the older uh, form of Windows, uh, what is it, XP? You fire your Windows up, and uh, here it comes up, and you're, and you're waiting for your little icon to come up, you know, and the little music that it plays and all of that. And it comes up on your screen, and everything looks good. And then all of a sudden, this window pops up over here. And then this window pops up over here. And another window comes up over here. And you hit your mouse, and you try to stop it, and it just keeps coming. It just keeps coming here, coming here, coming here. Windows are just flying all over the place. you got a virus. Amen. Let's say you try to log on. You get on, your, you get on your computer, fire it up, and here you are. Everything's going along. All of a sudden, your computer freezes, just like that. And it just keeps freezing just like that. That's another virus. Let's say you get on there and you start pulling up some work you've done. You've got a document in here. You've got a spreadsheet you've worked on. You've got a word processor you've worked on, this and that. You pull that thing up and it's nothing but a bunch of garble. And you've got all this work in this thing. But some worm has worked into that. And it's a virus. You can get a virus from an email. You can get a virus from logging on the web. You can get a virus from downloading files. You can get viruses a lot of different ways. People are writing new viruses every single day. They are putting something on your computer that you don't want. Now, let me give you something to think about. How many times have you seen somebody that's been arrested, tried in court, and condemned and sent off to prison because they had child pornography on their computer? If somebody wanted to put something on your computer, they could. If somebody would do a malicious thing to your computer and put something on there, they could. I'm going to read you some technology tonight. And I want you to understand, when we live in the world where you can neither buy nor sell, lest you have the mark of the beast, his name, or the number of his name. You make a cell phone call. Open your cell phone up, pick it up. You make a cell phone call. Call somebody, get through talking, hang it up, and that's it. You know, everything's fine. In full privacy, you think. On the Internet, they're offering a program. And mark this down. Anything that is in the commercial world was already in the government world. Okay? That's, that's a no-brainer. Anything that any commercial company can do, the government has first call on it. All right. Now I'm going to get back to MySpace and Facebook in just a minute. How many of you know what Facebook is? How many of you folks over 70 have a clue what Facebook is? You don't have a clue, huh? MySpace. You ask any of these kids what MySpace or Facebook is, they can tell you in a heartbeat. And they got all kinds of friends. They got a list of friends on there they talk to and chat with and go on all in privacy. Isn't that wonderful? Here's a website. I didn't have to nose around long to find this. The reason I looked for this is because of what I heard on television. I listened to an awful lot of these guys like Krauthammer and Bill Crystal and others. I listened to these guys. Krauthammer, Charles Krauthammer. There are smart people, then there are very smart people. Krauthammer is very smart. I listened to this guy. I listened to his take on things. And the other day I heard someone, I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about your cell phone. They were talking about the fact that somebody can control your cell phone. And they were saying that you can take your cell phone and lay it down on the table and you and someone in the kitchen carry on with the conversation and they can be listening to every word you're saying and it's not even open. That they can track you if you walk out of this building. They used to, the technology's come at the point now to where if you got your cell phone with you, they know where you are. So these people are selling, and I can't tell you what it is because we're on, the inter we're on uh, TV and all this, but here's what they say they can do. Have you ever wondered what your husband or wife is saying on their cell phone? Now you can listen in completely undetected. Using the same technology as law enforcement agencies worldwide, you can now see who they are calling, read what they are texting, and hear what they are saying, and more. Is your spouse cheating on you with someone else? Is your daughter still seeing that no good jerk? <laughs> Is your business partner making backroom deals? Are your kids secretly buying drugs? With their technology, 
You can view the contact list on the person's cell phone. Get the information from their context. How many of you got contacts on your cell phone? I've got uh, 400 on this one. People in the church. Read text messages. View calls made, calls received. Set the target phone to call you whenever it makes or receives a call. In plainer words, if I have their software, I can hook up to your phone and I can set it to ring me when you get rung. All of this included. Listen to live calls, extract text messages, view photos stored on any phone, read call logs safely and securely. You see, the thing about a cell phone is they keep a log. That's how the law convicts people. The police know that, and they use that to convict people with. And this uh, program says that um, nothing is logged. You leave absolutely no trace on the target's phone. Get it now while it is still available to the general public. Here are the frequently asked questions. Will it work in my country? Yes, this product does not depend upon country or mobile network. It will work anywhere in the world. Will I have to install any software on the phones I wish to spy on? No, this product only needs to be installed on your phone. Can you send me this product on a CV, CD? No, we do not physically ship our products. All of them are instant downloads. No monthly fees. No software to install on the target phone. Quiet, safe, Stealth. I read this thing and I thought to myself, can this be legal? With your purchase, you will get two extra bonus spy items. Bluetooth spy suite for your PC or laptop. Several never-before-released cell spy beta programs for all types of mobile devices. And it's only a hundred bucks. And I thought to myself as I read this, if these people have this, then other people have this. And then therefore your privacy is gone. That all someone has to have is your cell phone number, I assume. And by calling your cell phone number, transfer to your cell phone, whatever it is in this spyware they have, where they can from that moment on listen to your cell phone. That's quite a thing, isn't it? You can track people like that. They can neither buy nor sell except they take the mark of the beast. Now, if you are a gossiper and you've drug everybody across the coals this past week and, and uh, all kinds of names been flying across your cell phone, uh, somebody's got a list of it. Or they could have. Or they could buy the list. I could see how somebody could be blackmailed. And I could see how somebody could be condemned. I can see how some like, something like that, if it falls in the wrong hands, could be used on you like you wouldn't believe. Identity theft is one of the biggest crimes of today. Identity theft. People on Facebook and MySpace are very naive. For some reason, they believe that the only people looking at their Facebook or their, not, or their, or their MySpace are their friends. They're, 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 they're friends that they've invited in. Then nobody else cares anything about that. So they tell them who, what their name is. They tell them where they live. They, they post photographs. They put pictures of their children on there, the names of their children, the ages of their children. Plain of words, they just as well stand up on the street corner and say, Hey, all predators in town. These are my kids. This is where I live. And let me tell you something about the predators and Facebook and uh, MySpace. Facebook, uh, MySpace, let's see, which one have I got here? This is MySpace has just recently purged from the year 2007 up to the present. Here it is. 90,000 sex offenders. In plain words, all of these people that have Facebooks or MySpace and they've got a, an account and all this, and I don't know anything about it because I, I, don't, I, don't, I never get on it. Listen, folks, if you had a face like mine, would you want to put it on a book? 
Amen, son. I don't waste my time with it. Amen. Isn't that good? Regardless how old we get and decrepit we get. And it doesn't make any difference. He still loves us, doesn't he? Only the Lord could love somebody like that. But the truth of the matter is, I don't care anything about it. If I want to talk to you, I'll talk to you face to face. That's the way I want to talk. But the problem with this thing, it's not just you talking to somebody. They've got a whole lot of other people on there talking. It's the ability to interact with 5, 10, 15, 20 people at one time. You can't do that on the telephone. But you can do it on Facebook and MySpace. And 90,000 predators that they know of were expunged from the rolls. Now, I'm not blaming Facebook. I'm not blaming MySpace. Anytime you have a public forum like this, my goodness, people are going to use it. I'm not blaming these people. I'm telling you that I'm trying to warn you of the dangers involved. But now let me tell you something. If predators can get on there, anybody can get on there. And what you've done is made your life public to the world. Don't you think that's kind of foolish? Don't you think you're very foolish if you make your life public to the world? You don't want to put the names of your children on there. You don't even want to put their photographs on there. You don't want somebody to know what your kids look like. The only people who know what your kids look like are the ones who go to church with them and your school teacher. And your next door neighbor. In this age, this age, this age that you live in, you can't trust anybody. But my point is this. Your privacy has gone. Yes, and the ability to snoop is there. And if somebody in the wrong position of power wanted to, they could watch every move you're making. Amen. And they could tell when you're coming and when you're going and who you're talking to and what you're saying. Yes. And the technology is present that if they wanted to plant evidence against you, they could. Amen. If a governmental agency wanted to make you, a, make you a child pornography where you own child pornography, they could put it right in there. And you have to defend yourself then. The district attorney brings charges against you and arraigns you, indicts you, and you have to come before a jury and defend yourself. The government's got all kinds of money. We don't have any money, but they got unlimited resources. All I'm saying is this. When it comes down time for the Antichrist to put the noose around your neck, he can put it around your neck and force you to conform. To his rules and regulations. The technology is in place right now to control the, to control the public. Right now. It's not tomorrow. Today. And I think that a lot of folks are just real naive about it. I really do. I think they're naive. They're naive. Barrett Kios is a, is, a, um, is a Swedish girl, I think. She's Swedish. She's a good Christian. Good Christian woman. She's written a lot of books, a lot of articles. We, we used to publish her work when we had our newspaper. Her name is Barrett Kios, K-J-O-S, pronounced Kios. She had an article on her website about an organization called Echelon. Echelon gets into a much higher thing than selling software over the Internet where you can spy on somebody's cell phone. Echelon gets into governmental capacity and capability. It is the ability to spy from one country to another. Uh, a lot of reports have been made about it. A lot, of, uh, a lot of investigation into it. Jack Anderson, you know about him, uh, wrote an article, and it's entitled, Uncle Sam is Listening. It is, this, it is the rise of terrorism... And the government's responsibility to protect its citizens balanced against the freedoms that you have in the Constitution. Are you following me? The Patriot Act that was passed under President Bush took some of your freedoms away for the purpose of monitoring terrorist activities. A good thing to monitor terrorist activities but it costs you some of your freedoms. Now, you say it's not a big deal. Well, let me tell you something, folks. There is no country on this earth free like we are. And there's a lot of people that like to take your freedoms away from you. The United States becomes a thorn in the flesh of the Antichrist. 
He doesn't like our freedoms. He doesn't like that. But our founding fathers wanted you to have freedom. And that's what that Constitution was about. And the First Amendment said you have freedom of speech. And they're trying to take it away from you with hate laws and hate speech laws. The Second Amendment of the Constitution says you have a right to bear arms. The state of Tennessee, as you know, just passed a law overriding a veto by the governor of Tennessee. The law was passed by the Senate and the House that if you have a concealed carry permit that you can carry a weapon now into a restaurant where they serve alcohol. It's a felon. It's against the law. And it won't be a law until July the 14th, I think. But the governor vetoed that, saying that it, uh, guns and, and uh, alcohol don't mix. I'm not up here to argue anything. I'm just showing you something. The state legislature overruled him. So therefore it becomes law July the 14th. It's the idea that you must strike a balance between freedom, freedom, freedoms that are given to you. Once they're gone, they're gone. You have a freedom to, to, to assemble peaceably. That's what we're doing here tonight. We're assembling peaceably. Under a dictatorial communist regime, you couldn't assemble like this without permission from the state. Freedom, therefore, becomes the death knell of the Antichrist. He's got to, he, can't, he can't handle the freedoms. All right, follow me here. Watch for the one who wants to take your freedoms away. And watch for whatever he can use to do it. And you'll have to say it tonight, that whatever motive that our President Bush had, he was instrumental in beginning the downfall of freedoms in this country. And of course he kept the country safe. But it has cost you. And it will continue to cost. And the framework and structure and superstructure for the Antichrist to be able to do what he wants to do is coming in place. This is what's important. It's not any one thing. It's, a, it's, it's, the, it's the conjunction of a lot of things. You have a financial crisis which causes the door to be open to be able to do something else. You have the technology present. You have the law written. You have a war right now ready to, ready to start at any minute. You have the men capable of taking control, taking power, seizing it. And get ready. Because you're going to see the man of sin, the son of perdition. And you're going to hear a shout. And you're going to be called out of here. Amen. Now, if you see them start, if you hear, if you if if this week, I don't know what's going to happen. Mark it down. Now, they're not they're not going to tell about. It. They're not going to. <laughs> Netanyahu's not going to get on TV and say we strike Iran six o'clock tomorrow morning. Amen. When it happens, it happens. All right. It's the element of surprise. That's always a big issue in war. It gives you the advantage. The element of surprise. So when Israel strikes Iran, there'll be no warning. They've already done, they've already been doing all of their, uh, all kinds of, of uh, tactical maneuvers. Just recently had the largest full-scale mobilization in the country that Israel had ever had. Huge mobilization. In plain words, everybody got to, everybody went to where they're supposed to go and did what they were supposed to do in time of war. So Israel is ready. They're ready. They tried to deal with the President of the United States. He sent the message loud and clear to them. Iran will have nuclear technology. That is saying to Israel, it's time to fight. Yes, sir. And like I said at the beginning of the message, it may go much deeper than that. It may be that he intends to let them fight so he can stop the fight and bring peace. And then be hailed throughout the world as the peacemaker. And boys, you better watch. If that doesn't excite you, it does me. Amen. Watch for the, uh, when it happens, it'll be over. By the time you get it on the news, they'll have already struck. The bombs have already been sent, the bunker, bunker busting bomb, whatever the technology they got, it'll already happen. And what you'll be getting when the news comes, you'll be getting Iran's retaliation. That's what you'll get. Yes, sir.
Was he a serial killer, the one that they... He's a serial killer. The Facebook murderer. All right. So that's quite an infamous thing. We have already... We've got a serial killer now that's associated with Facebook. See? Well, you heard what our brother said, so now, did you hear us tonight? <laughs> How far out did that go? <laughs> as far as I know, they may already have this stuff on this thing. I don't know. This, but there's one thing about it. There's one thing about it. Oh, no, no. Yeah, right. A hacker can do anything he wants. They've hacked into the Pentagon. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. that. That's meaningless. No, no, no. Yeah, took pictures Exactly. And, and once a hacker gets in to sensitive information, you think he's going to tell the people he's in there? No. Why, well, these people in the Pentagon right now are some of, the other, some of these high, you know, uh, uh, highly sensitive information, they could already be, be hacked right now. Right, and they don't know it. That's that old boring lassie stuff. You watch that? Good night. I grew up watching Lassie. That's some clean entertainment, buddy. Lassie. Hey, clean, clean entertainment. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, use what I've said tonight. I hope it's been helpful to some folks. I hope it's cause for a little bit of alarm here, Lord. We need to realize, Father, that we, we, don't, have the, uh, we don't have the privacy and freedom we think we do. But there's all a reason for it. There's a reason. We know there's a reason. We know it's preparation for the man of sin, for the Antichrist. We know that. We rejoice in the fact that the Lord's going to come back soon. We rejoice in that. We know the Bible's never caught off guard. We know the Scripture prophesied this 2,000 years ago. No one had a clue what a cell phone was then. I didn't know what a cell phone was when I was a boy. I remember ringing dials, phones. Father, it's here now. It's here. And I pray that you'd use this for the glory of God tonight. Thy name we pray. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. Amen. Let's